talk about what nobody wants to talk about. Who here has ever failed? Who's here has failed miserably at something you wanted to achieve? Say, I. Who's done this more than once? Say, I. When you failed, why did you fail? Why are you suddenly tongue-tied? Come on, tell, I, tell you what. Why did you, what did you used to say the reason you failed when you were bullshitting yourself? You know I know better, so you're not telling me the truth. What did you used to say? I failed because... Okay, good, I didn't have enough money. What else? Didn't have, didn't have the right technology. Good, sir, Why, why'd you fail? I had the wrong people. They say I had the wrong leader. Isn't that interesting? It was the economy, bad economy. Not enough time, didn't have enough time. Now I asked this question for the first time about seven years ago, I was at this place called TED. Anybody watching those TED videos? And TED didn't have a website or anything at that stage. It was a very small program. It was done for about 800 people in Silicon Valley, most of them billionaire investors, the founders of Yahoo, the founders of Apple, the founders of a whole series of companies. And I was brought in and they say, you got 18 minutes, which my shortest seminar is four fucking days. So I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And then when, before they introduced me, the guy who was introducing me wasn't the guy who invited me. And he was an English guy. We're good friends today. But back then, he didn't know who I was. He thought I was a motivator. So he got up and he said, first thing he said to me before I went out there, he goes, oh, nice to meet you. Don't have people do that jumping shit I heard you do. So he wants me to take these dead people and leave them dead in this dark room sitting. And I watched before I got up to speak and there was a woman who was a genius and she was te teaching string theory, which is one of the most complex things on earth. And they gave her 18 minutes and people were shuffling their feet. And at the end, they didn't even clap for her. They were assholes. They all thought their shit didn't stink. These are all the achievers of the world. So I walk out there and the introduction he gives me is Tony Robbins is like a motivator and he's helped a lot of sports people, so maybe you can you know, create some energy here. He had a very publicized divorce a few years ago. I couldn't fucking believe it, he really did say that. If you watch the TED video, he cut that out because he's embarrassed. I said, so I got up afterwards and I said, God, it's a privilege to be here. I said, uh, I didn't know that my divorce was very publicized, but my ex-wife is very happy. <laughs> She has tens of millions of dollars, but I didn't come about that. I came to serve you. And then I was trying to figure out how to engage this room, so I asked them a question I just asked you. I said, who here has ever failed? And no one raised their hand in the whole fucking room. So I paused and I said, I know you're out there. I can hear your hearts beating. Who here has ever failed? And I demanded an answer, and then a few people raised their hand. I said, who here has ever failed? And now the whole thing started complaining. So I said, great. When you failed, why did you fail? And they said all the things you said. Didn't have enough time, didn't have the right technology, didn't have the money, didn't have the contacts, you know, had the wrong people. The people said we had the wrong leader, right? And then this voice in the darkness, the whole room was pitch black, says, I didn't have enough Supreme Court justices. And I looked down and it's Vice President Al Gore, who you probably don't know much about American politics, but he and Bush Jr. They tied, basically, and it had to go to our Supreme Court to decide who's going to be, and he lost. And when he said that, we were in Northern California, which is all Democrats, would have been supporters of his. They all stood up and gave him a standing ovation, and we said this. And when they stopped the standing ovation, I said, that's one way to try to explain why you didn't become President of the United States. But I wouldn't say it's an accurate one. And there was this pause, like, what the fuck is he about to say? And I said, because let's just do this logically. Everything you people have told me, I didn't have the technology, I didn't have the right contacts, I didn't have the time, I didn't have money. Everything you've told me, I didn't have enough Supreme Court justices, those are resources. And so you're telling me I failed because I didn't have the resources. And I'm here to tell you what you already know. Resources are never the problem. It's a lack of resourcefulness is why you failed. Because the ultimate resources are emotional states. If you're creative enough, can you find the answer, yes or no? If you're determined enough, can you find the breakthrough, yes or no? If you're passionate, loving enough, can you get someone to help you, yes or no? If there's no way that you're committed, can you find the money, even if you don't have it, yes or no? So I said, creativity 
decisiveness, passion, honesty, sincerity, love. These are the ultimate human resources. And when you engage these resources, you can get any other resource on earth. And I said, so you told me all the resources you're missing and you hypnotize yourself into believing that you don't have what you want because you don't have the resources. When the most successful people in history had no resources, but they were incredibly resourceful, so they got the resources. Resourcefulness is the ultimate resource. And if you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money, you don't have the time. That's bullshit. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take the fucking island, burn your fucking boats and you will take the island because people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. But most of us give ourselves a way out and that's why we don't have what we want. So if you and I really want to know what's going to take to get your dream and make it real, it's to stop all the things you told yourself that aren't. And I'm here to tell you what I said at the top of our discussion. 80% of success is psychology and 20% is mechanics. That's true of running your business. That's true of your intimate relationship. That's true of your body. That's true in your level of happiness. So you've got to know the 20% because that gives you the edge, right? Those strategies. But you've got to know the psychology. If you're in business right now, there's a few things. The chokehold, since, again, how many own a business? So I'm real clear. Really do own a business. You're not thinking about it, you own one. Raise your hand so I can see. Shit, most of you, I'm impressed. So if you own your business, I'll tell you right now, the chokehold on the growth of your business is you. It is not your people. It is the leader of this organization. The leader is the chokehold. And the chokehold comes in one of two forms. Your psychology. You think you've tried everything. You've tried everything but what fucking works. Who knows what I'm talking about here, right? Or it's a skill that you're missing. Like you really are incredible at writing code, but you don't know shit about accounting and finance, and it's eating your business alive. Because I got to tell you, 96% of all businesses in a 10-year period of time go under. Only 4% make it. By the way, make it doesn't mean that you succeed and have any money. It just means you're still standing. 4%. And by the way, after 10 years, you're set, right? There's no more challenges. Ever heard of a company called Lehman Brothers? Right? A hundred year old company. If you took their gross revenues and added them up, it'd be a trillion dollars over the decades. A trillion with a T and they're no longer here. That's how competitive the world is today. So if you got into business and you're in it right now, I love you, I respect you as a brother or sister, and I know you're a crazy son of a bitch just like me. You have to be. Who gets in a sport where the longer you play, the more likely you die? You're a gladiator if you're in business. A gladiator goes out there and they know every time I go out, I can die. And the longer I stay in the game, the more likely I die. But every day they go out to win. That takes an incredible psychology. But in that psychology, we bump onto limits and that's what you gotta shift. And if your psychology is solid, then you gotta say, where are the skills I'm missing? Because that's equally important. If you don't know how to market in the world we're in today, if you don't know the cutting edge of marketing, I'm only here today, I have the privilege to be with you here. How many of you are in this room because you listened to an audio, you read a book, or a friend, let me separate. How many of you are here because you read, read a book or listened to an audio and that created the basis for you to wanna be here? Uh, how many of you here because somebody told you, you've got to go see this guy? Let me see your hands. You saw that. Let me see your hands. Nice and high so you can look around the room. So about 85% of the room. I created a brand, and that's why I have the privilege to serve you. But that brand came because I realized early in my career, I got the best ideas in the world, but they're going to die on my lips unless I can market them, unless I can build a brand. It is the most important thing today because the world is made up of commodities. The world is so competitive. If you're a commodity, if you're a race for the lowest price, you will be out of business within 10 years, probably more like two to five. You have to have something that separates you from everybody else on earth. And until you find out that something, you will be stressed and you will be struggling. But everybody has it or anybody can create it. That's my expertise. My companies, I started with zero. We do more than five billion with a B per year, my companies combined. How the fuck did you do that when it's not even your focus? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. I appreciate the applause, but I'm not telling you for that reason. I want you to get, I was never even out to be successful in business. I had a mission, but I realized I have to master business or that mission is going to die. And you got to get that too. Because otherwise you're going to be one of the many. You're going to work your ass off and not have what you deserve.